Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a big pattern change which is going to be taking place especially over the eastern United States. We're going to be seeing a bit more of a colder pattern take place along the east coast. Uh, we'll have a trough coming in from eastern Canada that will dip down uh, into the eastern US and because of that we will be dealing with a bit of cooler temperature. So we're going to be talking about that and much more in today's video so make sure you are staying tuned all the way until the end. Here's a look at the current National Weather Service page. As you can see, we have some flood watches in effect for the southwest. That includes parts of Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and a little bit of Oregon as well. We have some red flag warnings in effect for parts of Oregon and California with some excessive heat warnings in parts of California, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. We have some heat advisories in effect for the northwest and a few more heat advisories in that orange color uh, for much of the southeast and even into parts of the southern and central plains. We have a few excessive heat warnings that covers parts of Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and even a little bit of South Carolina as well. We have some air quality alerts in that gray color for parts of the northwest and into the northern plains. And other than that, we don't have many other watches or warnings currently in place. Now, uh, yesterday we had a high temperature of 117 degrees. That was tied between two areas, Death Valley, California and Ocotillo Wells, California. Both of them got up to 117 degrees. The low temperature was four miles east-southeast of Escort Station, Maine, where they got down to 35 degrees yesterday. And the highest rainfall report was in Lakeland, Florida, where they got 3.09 inches of rainfall. No snowfall reports as of yesterday. Here's a look at the forecasted temperature anomaly map, and this is uh, from the European Ensemble models. So this is taking an average of about 51 different models, taking what the average of all of that would be, and then just plotting this on the map. So this is showing you how far below or above normal the temperatures are expected to be. The below normal temperatures would be in the blue and the green areas, even mixed in with a little bit of purple, and the above normal areas would be in the yellow, the oranges, and even a few uh, areas in the reds. So uh, for tomorrow, we are expecting some cooler temperatures in through uh, the northeast, the Great Lakes, even spanning all the way to the southwest. And if you live up in Canada, pretty much the eastern half of Canada is expected to be in that colder air mass. We're dealing with a trough which is digging in uh, to the eastern United States. Uh, so you have your trough somewhat like this. And because of that, we're going to be seeing a little bit of those cooler temperatures moving into that area. And also, we're going to see a little bit more of a fast-moving pattern. We're going to see more storms going in and out a little bit quicker uh, than what is normal for these spots. If you live in parts of the southeast and the southern plains, still staying, staying warm in these areas. That's why we have those heat advisories up and those heat warnings up right now. And then the northwest and western Canada also getting in on some of those warmer temperatures. Looking at for Sunday of this week, you can see that we have some of those warmer temperatures also just kind of lingering in through to the southeast. But for a majority of the country, I would say probably 70% of the country, we're dealing with uh, below normal or colder than normal temperatures. That goes from all the way uh, from the east coast to uh, the inner mountain west. So we're dealing with fairly cold temperatures from basically coast to coast with the exception of the immediate west coast. Uh, so we're dealing with fairly widespread colder temperatures by this point you're not going to see it stay as widespread we're going to see it maybe a fairly widespread uh, through the early part of, of this upcoming week and then it'll get a little bit more localized to the eastern half of the country the west will eventually fill in with a little bit of those warmer temperatures you can see that by monday of next week uh, or this upcoming week you can see that we have some of these colder temperatures still in effect for much of the eastern half of the U.S. So still quite warm in these areas and we're already into August by this point. So it's already August 2nd uh, and we're dealing with these very uh, or fairly cold temperatures. Now again, even though you're seeing temperatures that are 
5 or 6 degrees Celsius below normal. That would be closer to 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. That does not mean that it's necessarily going to be too noticeable. You will probably notice that instead of seeing high temperatures up near 85 or 90, you're going to see them down uh, near 75 or 80, uh, but you're still not going to be super, super cold. So there's, again, nothing really to worry about with this. It's actually going to be a quite comfortable pattern, uh, and the main concern, I think, would be for a lot of these areas is just rainfall. The rain will go up a little bit compared to what we were dealing with before. So I think that's the only thing that's going to really change uh, in terms of what you'll actually notice. It'll be a little bit stormier. You'll see a little bit more severe weather. Uh, there will be some more rainfall than what we were re uh, what we were previously seeing. But in terms of the actual temperature pattern, I don't think this will be too noticeable unless you're looking at the actual uh, forecast models. If you didn't, if you didn't, if you weren't aware of this uh, colder air mass, I don't think many people would actually notice it because the temperatures will still be fairly mild and seasonable considering that we're still in August. So even though it is below normal, it's still going to feel quite comfortable outside. Taking a look at August 3rd, which would be Tuesday of this upcoming week, everything shifts a little bit further to the east. We still have this high pressure uh, building in for parts of western Canada. These areas have been warm uh, and above normal for pretty much the entire summer, so they really haven't gotten a break if you live up in central or western Canada. Uh, you can see that the eastern two-thirds of, of the United States are still under a bit of a colder pattern, so that colder air is kind of starting to wane a little bit. It's starting to move a little bit further east, but still, it's very widespread uh, at this point. If we look at for the 4th of August, here would be uh, for Wednesday of this upcoming week, we can see that we have still some warmer temperatures up into parts of central and western Canada. We have also along the west coast some of those warmer temperatures. And then anywhere east of the Rockies is fairly below normal uh, for this time of year. If we look at for Thursday, uh, you can see this would be for August 5th. It does move in a little bit further to the east, so it's not as far west in terms of the uh, extent of the colder air, but it is still fairly widespread. Basically, anywhere uh, east of the Rockies, for the most part, is going to be below normal by this point. So really not too much deviation from what we were dealing with for most of the week. By Friday is when this starts to kind of uh, edge out a little bit, starts to move out a little bit more, uh, and it's now kind of hugging the coast, uh, the coastlines by this point. So now, uh, mainly if you live in the southeast, the south, the southern plains, and also uh, along the east coast, this is where you're dealing with the below normal temperatures. If you live in through the southwest, the northern plains, and with a few exceptions also into the northern Rockies, that's where you're actually going to be fairly above normal, fairly warm for this time of year. So you can see that it is, it is starting to way now a little bit more we're not dealing with as widespread of these colder temperatures but still we have below normal temperatures over a fairly broad area in the eastern uh in the eastern united states looking at for the temperature uh, or the actually high, the height anomaly map this is showing you uh, in the upper part of the atmosphere where are the troughs the ridges and everything in between this is showing you the low pressures in the blue colors so the blue colors generally indicating an area of low pressure and then based on the isobars which are the black lines on the screen you can tell where uh, the troughs are actually set up so you can tell that we have a trough right here that's digging into the eastern United States this would be by Monday so uh, this would be Monday day just a couple days from now uh, and this is what the upper air setup is expected to be like uh, you can also see that along the western uh, the western United States and into western Canada especially we have a bit of a ridge so we have a broad one in the southwest and then we have a surface high pressure which is also up into western Canada so we have the upper air high pressure which is down in the southwest and then in western Canada is where the actual surface high pressure is currently uh, situated in terms of the trough pattern because I think this is a little bit more complex so I'm going to spend a little bit more time on that uh, the trough is a little bit uh, a little bit interesting we have one low pressure which is up here we have another one which is moving out into the Atlantic so this one is moving out that's not going to be too much of a big player and that's actually one of the reasons that this trough continues to steadily head to the east we have another low pressure which is into the northeast and these three storms are going to kind of work together so again this one is out of the equation by this point this one is going to move out within the next couple of days so now you're just going to be dealing with these two systems kind of just rotating around each other 
And because of this system up in northern and northeastern Canada moving out, this is going to allow this entire trough feature to also gradually move to the east. So uh, it's going to need to wait for the Atlantic to get less clogged up. And then once that happens, once we have a little bit of a open uh, gate for these storms to move out, they will eventually make their way. Uh, so by Wednesday or Thursday, they'll start to move their way further and further east, and especially so by the weekend is when these troughs will be uh, still in the eastern United States, but not as prevalent as they once were uh, in those areas. So that's what's happening in the upper air. If you're interested about the temperature outlook, this is the Climate Prediction Center's forecast over the next 6 to 10 days, which takes you from August 4th through August 8th, and you can see that we are still expecting those colder temperatures if you live uh, anywhere from the coastal northeast all the way down to parts of the southern plains, so pretty much the entire eastern half of the country except for parts of the Great Lakes and uh, northern New England. So a fairly wide swath there dealing with colder temperatures. It will be warm if you live in parts of the northern plains and also into the southwest where we have a few pockets of those of those warmer than normal temperatures and I think that's going to be a lot more noticeable I think it's a lot more noticeable when the temperature jumps from 85 to 95 or even 100 degrees than it is when the temperature drops from 85 to 80 or 75 degrees so I think if you live up in the northern plains or in the west you're going to notice this pattern switch a lot more than if you were in that area that's expected uh, that's expected those cooler temperatures. If we look at the 8 to 14 day outlook, this is from the 6th through the 12th of August, and you can see that we have everywhere pretty much dealing with above normal temperatures, except if you live in parts of the southeast and the southern plains, where we are expecting to see cooler temperatures. But even in that area, you're going to have a few days mixed in where it's expected to be above normal and warmer than normal. And anywhere north of there or anywhere except for that area is expected to be in the above normal uh, area in terms of the temperatures. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.